What's up guys? Ashley here and I am back with another video here to show you how I tackled this kitchen renovation. With all the craziness going on with the world right now, I thought why not give back to someone who's always giving back to others. So I decided to gift a kitchen renovation to an essential worker and it's all being made possible by the Home Depot. Michaela is a nurse here in Oklahoma City and she's always giving herself and her time to others. So today we're gonna do something special for her and make over her kitchen. Let's get into it. So first I started with taking down the old cabinets. This was super easy because they were just secured to the wall by four screws. I unscrewed these screws in each of the cabinets and gave the cabinets a little tug and they came tumbling down. Next was the backsplash. Now lucky for me, this backsplash was super easy to take off. With a hammer and a crowbar, I was able to peel it off the wall and luckily it didn't take off a lot of the drywall, which for me was a very good thing. Once I removed the existing backsplash, it was time to remove the sink. Now y'all, this is my first kitchen renovation. So coming in, I was so skeptical about whether I could actually remove the sink or not and install a new one, but it was totally easier than I anticipated. I basically turned off the water, unhooked all the drainage underneath, and then I broke the line of sealant around the sink with a crowbar and a knife, gave the little sink a tug, and it came right out. So for this project, I had a little help from my friend Kim, and she has never done DIY projects before. But she decided to take on the doer challenge and get it done. So as you can see, she is taking on the challenge and using her drill for the first time to take off those cabinets. Now with those doors off, it's on to take on those countertops. So basically, I unscrewed the screws from underneath to the cabinets that were securing the countertops down, and then I gave it a little tug with my crowbar and a little push, and the countertop broke in half, and I was able to remove the rest of the backsplash and countertop that was existing. Now with the demolition complete, it was time to retransform the space. I first started off with the bottom cabinets. Now, because I was on a budget, I decided instead of getting new cabinets on the bottom, to just refinish the existing cabinets. So here you can see me sanding it down. I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper at first just to get all those imperfections out and then I go back with 120 grit sandpaper to sand it all down nice and smooth. Now, once I sanded it initially, I went back with wood filler and some paint and patch to fill any imperfections or holes that I saw just to make sure that when I paint there would be a smooth finish. Now, this was one of my favorite parts of the project because I absolutely love the look of this butcher block countertop. So first, I wanted to cut down the butcher block to size. So I measured how long it needed to be in the space, measured it on the butcher block, and I used my track saw to cut the butcher block down. And man, did this track saw get the job done. Once the butcher block was all cut down to size, we placed it in the kitchen and we secured it down with screws from underneath. Now that the butcher block is all installed, it was time to cut out that sinkhole. Now, I was a little nervous with this part because I knew if we had messed up the sinkhole that this was basically it. We had ruined the butcher block. So I decided to cut out a template first. So I just used a 1 4th piece of plywood. I drew out the template, measured it with the sink, and cut out a hole so then I can use that template to trace it onto the butcher block. Once that was all cut out, I put that template on the butcher block, traced it out, and then I started cutting the hole with my track saw. Now, here you can see me making plunge cuts. I made four plunge cuts along the sinkhole, and then I used my jigsaw to go back and round the corners. Once the sinkhole was all cut, I went back with my sander just to smooth out those edges nice and good, using 80 grit and then back with 120 grit. Once I finished sanding out that sinkhole, I decided to go back to the bottom cabinets and paint them with the green color. Now, this green was so amazing. I'm so glad I decided to go with this color. It is called North Woods, found at your local Home Depot, and it really brought out the bottom cabinets. Now with the bottom cabinets all ready to go, it was time to move on to the tile. 
Now, again, this was my first time tiling, so I was kind of unsure about which way I wanted to go, but I decided instead of spreading the mortar on the wall like you would normally see, I instead back buttered each tile and placed them separately. Um, one reason being, we decided to use the existing drywall because we were on a tight budget and the wall was a little uneven. So I felt like it would be easier to manage that way by back buttering each tile and kind of leveling it out that way. If you feel more comfortable spreading the mortar on the wall first, it's absolutely your choice to do that. And I may even try that next time, but I thought because it was my first time that this would be the easiest way for me to get it done. And it worked out fine. This was definitely a team effort. While I back buttered the tiles, Kim basically laid the spacers and did some of the cleanup for the tile, so it made the project go a lot faster. Now, to cut the little tiles on the sides and around the outlets, I'm using my Ryobi towel saw, and I love this tool. It works so great, and it's definitely a good tool for beginners. Now, let's move on to those upper cabinets. So since I decided to refinish the bottom cabinets, I thought, why not splurge on some upper cabinets? So I got these new, frameless, unfinished cabinets from the Home Depot. I really love how they look with the frameless look. Now if you're going to paint your kitchen cabinets, I would highly recommend to use a paint sprayer. A paint sprayer is definitely much better than a roller when it comes to cabinets because it lays on that paint evenly and it saves so much more time. Now let's get into how I installed the cabinets. Now, the first thing I did was to find the studs in the wall. This is important because you want to make sure when you're screwing in your cabinets that you're screwing them into studs so that they can hold them sturdy. So here I'm just using my stud finder to find the studs and marking where I need to drill the holes. Next, I take a 2x4 and basically secure that to the wall and add my level on top to make sure that the 2x4 is nice and level. This 2x4 helps support the cabinets so that you don't have to hold them up and you can make sure that they go on level. Now a good little tip is to go ahead and pre-drill those screws into the cabinets where they need to go so that when you lift it up on top of the 2x4 you don't have to waste time screwing those in. They're already in there and you can just screw them into the studs and you're good to go. Once those cabinets were hung it was time to add in the sink. Now because of the funkiness of how this sink was going in, it was a little difficult to get the sink in there, but we finally managed to get it in the hole. As you can see, my friend is holding the sink while I'm adding a silicone adhesive to the top. This will help to keep the sink into place to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Once I put the adhesive on the top, I'm taking a clamp and a 2x4 to basically hold the sink into place to let the silicone dry overnight. Now you may need to wipe up any adhesive that may spill out when you push the sink onto the wood and you can just do that quickly and you'll be good to go. Now let's go on to sealing the countertops. So I first went through and added some epoxy to all the little holes and imperfections in the butcher block. Now these small little imperfections is what gives the butcher block character but I wanted to make sure that they were filled in so that the butcher block was nice and smooth. Once that epoxy was all dry, I went back and sanded down the butcher block till it was nice and smooth. After sanding, I started adding the tongue oil. Now you guys, this tongue oil will bring out that countertop and make it nice and warm. As you can see, I'm just applying it with a bristle brush and I'm going to do this three times. So I apply the tongue oil, let it sit for 15 minutes, wipe off all the excess, let it dry for a day, and then do this three more times. Now with those countertops all dry, it was time to install the faucet, which again, was another first. Now, I will say that taking out the kitchen sink was definitely easier than installing it back. But so once I figured out how to install it, it was pretty simple. The directions for the faucet were really easy, so I just followed those, and then I hooked the drainage back up, and the sink was installed. I was super happy to know that I could have running water again. Now, this next part of the project wasn't in the original plan, but when I hung the upper cabinets, I decided to raise the cabinets just to give the woods a little more space in the kitchen. But it just wasn't looking good to me 
in the eye. So I decided to build these custom little cubbies to add to the bottom of the cabinets. And I'm so glad I did because they look so good. I painted these cubbies the same beige color and was able to attach them right to the upper cabinets using my right angle drill attachment. I was also able to build a custom middle shelf so that the woods could have a space to display some of their dishes and to open it up a little bit. I hung this cabinet the same way that I hung the upper cabinets and I screwed four screws into studs in the back and then I screwed four screws into the existing cabinets on the side. Now to finish those bottom cabinet doors, I gave them a good old sanding and then used that same paint sprayer to paint the Northwoods paints on the doors. Now that the cabinets are all up and ready to go, it was time to finish the tile. So as you can see here, I'm just kind of doing the same technique that I was using before to finish the tile. And as you can see, I was getting in the groove here because I was excited that we were getting finished and wrapping up the project. Now on to the flooring. Now the existing tile in the kitchen was a little darker color, so I wanted to do something that was gonna brighten up the space. So I decided to use this life proof flooring. Now, I put this same flooring into my house a couple years ago, and I absolutely loved it, and I thought it would be perfect for the Woods Kitchen. This particular flooring is also supposed to be good for pets, and the Woods have two little dogs, so I thought that this would work really well in their kitchen. The really great thing about this product is that it's super easy to install. I was able to install this floor in less than an hour. I know that sounds crazy, but it basically has an interlocking system that you can place right over your existing tile. So if you're looking for flooring on a budget, this is definitely the way to go. Now on to grouting tile. Now this was a little simpler than I anticipated, and luckily I had found this pre-mixed grout that came ready right out the tub. All I had to do was pop the top off and it was ready to go. Now, when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you take it in sections because the grout dries really fast once you place it on the tile. So as you can see, I'm just putting grout in little sections, getting it in those nooks and crannies using my little float, and then once they're in the little crannies, I go back with my sponge and clean off the excess grout. Again, you wanna make sure you take it in sections because once that grout dries, it's extremely hard to get it off the tile. So you just wanna put that grout in little sections, clean it off, go back with the rag, make sure the tile's all clean, and then repeat steps over and over again. Once I was finished grouting all of the tile, I went back with some caulk just to fill in all those seams around the corners. And I was so glad to be done with this part because I could see how the kitchen was coming together. Now, everyone loves a little shiplap, so I knew this would be a great way to open up the space and also give the kitchen a nice, clean look. So here, I'm just adding the pre-made shiplap. This was really simple to do. I basically just had to cut out the ends and then use my jigsaw to cut out any outlet corners. Now here, you can see that I'm using spacers to bring those outlets out just so that it looks clean and the outlets sit on top of the shiplap. Once I installed all the shiplap, I went back and filled all those little nail holes with wood filler. And then once that was dry, I sanded those holes down and then I painted the shiplap white with a rolling brush. I'm so glad that I was able to pull this kitchen off and now I'm excited to show the woods their new kitchen. So I hope you guys love your kitchen. I really just wanted to bring a modern feel with like the ButcherBot countertops and the two-tone kitchen. So I hope you guys love it. Everything is provided by Home Depot. And we just wanted to say thank you, Michaela, for all that you do. So I hope that you love it and, and y'all can enjoy it for years to come. Amazing, thank you. Yeah, we love it, it's awesome. And that wraps up everything for the kitchen renovation. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope I'm inspiring you guys to get out there and DIY. Boom.